السلام عليكم خزي أنا مغربة أدي إيفا جو باو سويت شوب قد إلى خاكاندي ستور جنديت لافيت خمدة السورت لا قربنا من سان فرانسيسكو كاليفورنيا لخا بتبقاخن بميقورتا زينة وبخاتو شهر زاد قد إنا مارد دا دي كانا وبخا دي كانا خيتا تكون مغداها جو بركلي أدي أزا تبقاخ بزينة وبشهر زاد مغزيلة دي كانا همزمي بعد بزنزة Thanks for having me over your store. Hello. It's a wonderful store. Thank you for coming here. Thank you. Well, why don't you guys give us a tour of the store and tell us how you started up the business and what, how did you, where the idea came from? So the idea came from, came very unexpectedly. I was taking my daughter to Sonoma University, and on our way there. My husband had told me that I have to see this very unusual candy store and he took me to a Powell's. And we had been looking for a business, we weren't sure what type of business we wanted to do and we went into the Powell's of Hillsburg and I completely fell in love with it. And I told him, I want one. You want one? <laughs> Th that's exactly what that's happened. That's an easy way of doing it. I, I want, want one. one. Wives, remember, just tell your husband you want one. <laughs> the, the joy and the fun that you feel when you go into these stores yeah. is amazing. And a week later, we were meeting with Michael Powell's and we started the process. That's now, how it it's happened. It's a franchise, right? Yes, it is a franchise. We were... Uh, by the time we approached him, maybe the fourth store that started talking to him. Mm -hmm. And by the time we opened physically the store, we were the 12th. Wow. Uh, how many franchises are there now? This 16, 16 okay. total. So there's uh, two of you, you both sisters started the business together and how did you convince your sister to join in? Actually I started telling her about it, mm -hmm. um, about what about selling candy, Sherzad was always in the pro corporate world mm -hmm. and then I leave the answer up to you. So what happened, they told me about this, I wasn't ready, I was working for a very big gaming company. Mm -hmm and enjoying it and they offered partnership in this store I wasn't ready yet mm -hmm. and when I saw the success and joy not only the success the joy of what was going on here mm -hmm. by the time they were ready for the second store it was a yes you were ready to go so <laughs> okay. I entered yeah. the partnership with them and we opened a second store in in Berkeley. in Berkeley. Now, did you write a business plan prior to starting the business? Well, thank God there is my husband, Nabil. He's the one that looked at the numbers very thoroughly because you want to make sure that you're viable financially. Mm -hmm. And so he kept on going over the numbers again and again and again. And it was a very healthy financial plan. Mm -hmm. And um, we had no problem. He is so well organized and precise that it worked. So you weren't really, I mean, there's always butterfly, there's always fear that it may not happen or something may go wrong. Did well, you? well, that's definitely our motto and it's Nabil's motto that failure is always an option. Yes. <laughs> and we, we knew that, but you have to decide whether you want to jump mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. And we jumped and the reward was fantastic. I mean, look around you. It's, yeah, it's, it's a great store. Yeah. And so, um, so far, so good. The businesses have been doing very well. Now, I, I was told by Nabil that it was the business was profitable the first year you were in. It, it was incredible. The first year we 
opened our store, we were so busy with customers because the concept is very unusual. This is Willy Wonka around you. And so, I mean, I was, we were ready to drop. People would complain when we would close our doors at 10 o'clock. They wanted us to be open later. It was immediately a success. Wow, yeah. that's wonderful. Now, yeah. what, what were some of the challenges you faced? Um, I think, challenges that I think the, of course, it's in the beginning, the, um, you, the rush is insane. I do know for a fact that Lafayette had a challenge keeping stock because the merchandise would hit and leave. And out. The first week you couldn't move, it was elbow to elbow here. And I think um, the other challenge is your staff because the staff is, your staff it's also a bit your family yes. and um, so you have to make sure you have the people that enjoy doing this. It's a lot of hard work but it's an absolute joy. So um, our staff, every time UPS shows up or Federal, Federal Express with a delivery, they cheer. Yay, we got the candy. Yay, we got the toys. So it's, it's that type of commitment. So and I think it's, it's also, yeah, the, the challenge is because they're so young, they're college kids, how do you communicate the culture yes. that you want to create here? And it's a culture of caring, sharing, and being a team. So that was one of the challenge, uh, challenges. Another one for me, I'm a very emotional person. <laughs> so I had to learn to take two steps back and to start thinking not only emotionally, but rationally. Mm -hmm. And training. Yes. You agree when it comes to training? We tend to hire people that are ambitious mm -hmm. and we know that we will be a stepping stone for the young ambitious kids that come through us. So we do know that they're gonna leave. Mm -hmm. So we bring them in, we train them, we mentor them. We oh, help nice. them with their resumes, interviews, right. anything that they right. need so that they can move on. But that means we have to do more training. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's... But it's the nature of the business. A, we like it. Yeah. We like to hire people that will use us as a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. We acknowledge it and we help them on their journey. That's wonderful. So, but we do want some commitment. So, you know, that's clear. And it becomes a give and take. Mm -hmm. We have an employee that moved on quite a while ago. She's an engineer and she still comes here on an emergency basis when we have turnovers that are a bit tight with oh, staffing. That's nice. So that's, yeah. that's what, what you have. Now, did the corporation, franchise, the franchise corporation, or power co company, did they help you with the training, initial training? So the, the initial training, you go to the corporate, they train you four days over there. Mm -hmm. They put you in the store, they teach you the opening procedures, closing procedures. They start exposing you to the products. And then once the place is built, it's full immersion for five days. You have to set up all the store. And this is when you really train. Suddenly, you are dealing with around 7,000 7, different SKUs. Mm -hmm. wow. And you're starting to learn about your products. Mm -hmm. And that's another challenge because you have to immediately full emergent start being familiar what products are you selling what do you have here they train you but then you have to train yourself in real life and that's how it happens but we have their their support in the way it was set up and the way they communicated with the staff and they make recommendations at times we get offered certain products and like we said, certain products that are successful here may not be successful in the other store. And if I have a hesitation and I don't get enough strength for a product, I may call corporate and say, okay, here's the deal. What do you think? Do you think it's going to work in my area? Why? And then we discuss it. And sometimes they offer certain products that we do not think will work for our area. So we have the freedom to decide to say, not for them. Yeah. So it is a give and take, there's a lot of support. We also email, it's a small family, it's a tiny franchise. So it's like a family, we know each other and we shoot an email. I'm thinking of getting this product, how does it do in your store? 
and you will get the response. Oh, don't bother, it's horrible here. Another one will say, oh, it's yeah. not super successful. And then you take a decision. So it's a, it's a, you get a lot of input. And it's mm. nice to know that you have almost like a family support. It's not just business. Well, it's pretty, actually, I looked it up online and they don't accept applications anymore for franchise because there's so many, they have so many applicants. So it's a pretty popular um, store. Actually, I was talking to Bear, who owns the franchise now. He is about to open it again. I think they stopped at the time because of the recession. Because mm -hmm. their policy, their culture is, they don't want to set up for a business unless they make sure that it's going to be successful. So with the recession, they had to slow down a little. And now that they feel that the economy is picking up again, it's going to be opened again for franchising. So if someone was going to open up a store like this, how much do they need initially to get in? I would it's like half a million, 100,000, 200,000? For the Lafayette store, it was half a million dollars. Um, for the Berkeley store, it was a little, a it's a less. smaller space. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, half a million is what it would take, I would say, and less. Mm -hmm. Well, it so. all depends also on the location. Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah. And also the time you rent, for yeah. example, rents were certainly higher when the Lafayette store opened than when the Berkeley store opened. And at its location, if you're going to rent in Lafayette, mm -hmm. it's going to be I mean, the, the rent I pay here is X number of dollars, whereas if you're renting, let's say, in Windsor, the rent is much lower. Right. Had I rented in San Francisco, it would have been even <laughs> higher. So it depends on location, I think, makes also a very big difference in how you're planning mm -hmm. your finances mm -hmm. and what you can absorb and how much you have to sell. Right, yeah, so absolutely. it's all interrelated. Now, do they yeah. give you the uh, corporate? Did they give you a list of vendors, approved vendors that you have to buy from, or you could have your own vendors? We we have more than seventy five different vendors that we deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, they recommend them, but at the same time, we're very in involved in candy shows. We go together. We Nabil joins joins us as well. We explore, and the beauty of this franchise, we recommend products, mm -hmm. and I would say 98 percent of the time, you're great. They're approved. Yes. So it is so, nice that we do get to input if we think something may be successful, mm -hmm. and then. If it's in line with the soul of the store, yes. the products are approved. But definitely there is a lot of strength when the corporate office negotiates with the vendors when they know, okay, you're not only going to get one store, you're going to get 16 stores purchasing from you. So we do have strength. Well, so you get, yeah, better prices. Yes. Better prices and they also send us constantly emails, hey, are you aware of this new product? So we're all joining forces. Again, it's the concept of the team. It's not us, them, mm -hmm. with corporate, the way it's not us, our staff. Right. It's really the concept of the team that makes it a success. Yes. Yeah. We're all in it together. And even my staff, they contact vendors when they like products, yeah. they contact corporate. Can we have these, please? We saw them. Would you approve them? Everybody is involved in one way or another, which is wonderful. That's why it's, it's it, a it family. It's a, Absolutely. Everyone, it's, everyone's it working for the same feel. goal as success. Right. Now, do you have to pay something to the corporate on a monthly basis as a There are royalties. Yes. Royalties. Yeah. Okay. They do get royalties. Um, is it like based on percentage uh, of uh, your gross income or profit? How does that work? Uh, they are fixed royalties mm -hmm. that, that we pay on a monthly basis, basically. So, okay, so it's not based on whether I was profitable this year or not, or no. how much I grossed. No, it's part of your contract. However, mm -hmm. they would um, take into consideration at one point they did lower them a little because of the recession but that's Michael Powell's which is very unusual not everybody 
I have yet to see other franchises yeah. that did what he did. Yeah. Uh, that was unheard of. Yeah. He's a person that's, that has a lot of integrity. Yes. Again, the family, family. <laughs> concept, exactly. It's not just about the money. It's about who we want to be and what we want to share yes. with people. And, and, and the fact that two sisters are working together, that's... Well, Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is wonderful and I think the fact that we do have two separate entities um, is wonderful because mm -hmm. I think if we were every day together then maybe the sisterly dynamic the bickering may, may start we yeah. definitely would start so we have enough of our um, we have our own little areas mm -hmm. at the same time a phone call away and there are many many times when I first opened where I would call on Zena and Zena would just come over or vice versa when things were a little crazy When I'm here. traveling, she passes by the buy. store mm -hmm. and even sends me e emails. I noticed they weren't wearing their aprons or, you know, so I sent a blast an email <laughs> to all my staff, although I'm in Europe. Yeah. So we always know mm -hmm. what's going on, yeah. 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 you know. Could that allows you to actually have a vacation because most Absolutely. businesses can't, most owners have hard Absolutely. time going on vacation. Absolutely. So having your own right-hand person. Right. Well, yeah. that's one thing. And the other thing is we also have um, staff that is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, that cycles in and out. Yes. I, I was able to take a very long vacation last year because I had a couple of right-hand people. Now they're gone, so now I have to train new right-hand yeah. people. But we definitely try not to overlap too much at the same time away from our stores. There are babies. This is not just a store for yes, us. It's yes. our baby. Yes. We're very proud of our stores. Wonderful. Yeah. How many staff do you have? Like, how many people work here? In Lafayette, we have eight people. How many do you have? Mm -hmm. and five. She has five. five. And they're op the stores are open from what time to what time? Lafayette, uh, we open to the public 10 o'clock mm -hmm. until 9 o'clock in the evening. So do you have to be here yourself from 10 to 9 or you mm, come and go? Absolutely not. They're mm -hmm. so well trained yeah. that, um, and that's the beauty of being your own boss, right? Yeah, of course. Um, if I see that everything is running smoothly, I can call and say, you know what, I'm not coming in today. But on the other hand, I can have an emergency, somebody's sick, mm -hmm. and I have nobody that's going to do the closing, and I'm going to come here at 7, 8 o'clock in the evening. Mm -hmm. It's like having a child, basically. Yes. They don't need you all the time, Yes. but when you're needed, you have to... You have to be there. Right. And I think Berkeley has Berkeley's slightly different hours than ours. We open a little later. The food traffic is not as intensive in the morning, so we open at 11. Yeah. And also, they are absolutely independent of the need to be. Yeah. So, you know, we're proud of them. Yeah. They really, really do an yeah. amazing job. And I think the soul of the store is thanks to them. So very thankful to them, to the kids. That's nice. I mean, I, mean, I, I guess uh, Michael Powell has projected that family style that actually goes on to franchisee and then the employees yeah. and it trickles down yeah. that's that's very and nice. i can tell you a few months ago i had all a franchise meeting mm -hmm. they all came to my house and we were all together all the people from from the other stores and we were talking how was your year anything we should discuss yes. anything we should be aware of and that was wonderful because you feed off their experience, their ideas, you tell them what you think. And we spent a wonderful afternoon actually that day in my backyard just talking and making sure that everybody was okay. There's that too. Oh, how nice. You know? So, yeah. We have an advantage in the fact that we support each other and it's not just a business, um, it's also an emotional support. Right. So we can talk, we can, okay, what's the challenge, what's going on, mm -hmm. this is what, you know, this is the best right. way to approach it. And we sometimes have different approaches and we bounce them off each other. So when we meet as franchisees, it's not just about informational exchange. I think it is important to right. see that we're facing the same challenges or 
Some right. people may have a bit more of a struggle. You can guide them a little bit on uh, how you resolve it. Yes. And now there is a new owner, Bear. Mm -hmm. I can't remember his last Bear name. Bear Silver. Silver. And the transition has gone so smoothly. He was at the French list and he's young. Very young. Full of really? energy. Wow. It's, it's wonderful. So we're lucky, even with the new corporate, they have more or less the same vision. It's, it's been really a smooth, smooth transition. Smooth transition. Yeah. So what, or what was the, uh, the biggest challenge that you faced and what was the biggest challenge that you faced? You want to go first? It's, it's going to be very strange. Going from, I used to, to teach French. Yes. So it's a very, very different environment, right? Yes. So going from the teaching profession to opening the store, we were so successful. Nabil, my husband, was in heaven. He was in paradise yeah, looking at what was happening. <laughs> I and I was that. so tired emotionally and physically. I would go home and cry. It's like too much. It was too, I was overwhelmed, touch wood, by the success. Yeah. Um, so the challenge was, I would say, that rhythm. Yeah. The second thing was to learn about the products. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be hard. Okay. So many products. So many different products. At the, and having grown up in a different part of the world, yes. there's a lot of products. I didn't grow up with these items. Yes. And I had to teach myself what they were. Yes. You know. So I think that was my challenge. Yours? Well, I didn't get to cry because she did all the crying. She did crying. all the crying. So by the time I opened, I had both of them supporting me and guiding me with what needed to be done. I didn't have to stress. And she had trained here. Yeah. So oh. she was here. So, so she was already so, familiar. So I was familiar with the products. I was familiar with the rhythms. I was familiar with a lot of things. And the fact that I knew what they went through. So it was very smooth for me in that sense. My challenge was switching from uh, managing people with at least five to ten years of experience to a new crew. Yes. And my first group definitely, I, <laughs> I had to learn through them because it was, um, there were things that I probably was challenged by not I felt they well. They should know this. They yeah. should know oh, yeah, that this is the way. Yeah. So to it's do management. It, so. It's more a management of a young crew, assuming yeah. that certain things. When I was in my twenties, I certainly would not have thought certain ways, and I was challenged by a new culture and um, very, very young and ambitious crew. So that was a, a bit of a challenge yeah. for me in the beginning. But they went well, and they're, they're very again supportive, and they dealt with the quirkiness. And now I make it uh, part of my job interview. I tell them about my quirkiness, like repeating myself a lot. And I tell them, if you can't take it, you can't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> because we have constant staff rotation, yeah. so you don't yeah. remember. Did I tell you Did this? I tell you that? And, and I have to say, I mean, I don't cry anymore. I yeah. love yeah. it. Thank God. I, I, Thank I, God. <laughs> I love it. And I loved it from day one. It was just, and that's why I say, don't just think emotionally, yeah. think rationally. <laughs> that's right. what I had to learn, you know. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a different Absolutely. way of thinking. Yeah. Rationally, it's a different way of thinking. And, yes. Yeah. I don't but you buy were for from a the corporate, second though. that <laughs> she can't be emotional and neither <laughs> can I. And that's why the, the first team, they had to deal with the emotion thing. Yeah. And, the, and I liked... Um, we would meet and talk about things, yes. and I would get feedback, and it was great because they made me better. It was really fun. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I don't believe for a second that no matter how rational we try to be, yeah, that we're yeah. not emotional. We're yes. too passionate about yes. our stories. <laughs> it's a good combination, actually. It shows. Yeah. It shows. Yeah, you need, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a place where emotions, you encourage emotions. Yeah. People buy I mean, based on emotions. Look around you. Yeah. It's about sensory. Look at the colors. Yeah. Look at the smells. You, you should be smelling the smell of candy. Yeah. What are you hearing? It's music. Yes. And you have two things happening at the same time. It's the Willy Wonka movie in yeah. the theater section. And then it's, right now, it's holiday music that yes. you're hearing in the background. So 
you come in and it takes you over. You, and you start experiencing yes. who we are, Powell's. Yeah. And you forget the outside world. This you, is a totally different goal. world. That's the goal. Now, what's your ethnic background? Tell us about yourself a little bit. I forgot to ask you, where did you guys come from? What countries? Well, we come from Lebanon. Mm -hmm. We were both, well, Zena was born in Geneva, Switzerland, but I was born in uh, Beirut, Lebanon. So we're Lebanese and we traveled all over the world um, through our father's business, who was in the airlines. Mm -hmm. And eventually we both came to this country. To the US. And Zena and Nabil moved to California first. I was in Florida. Mm -hmm. And I moved to join them. It was more being around family. Right. And it grew into this wonderful partnership. So Maybe what we could do right now is if we walk around the store, give me a little bit tour of the store, and then so our Absolutely. audience can get familiar with wonderful candies you have here. <laughs> Absolutely. So behind you is one of my favorite sections. This is the bacon section. Bacon soap. It's real soap. Bacon toothpaste. Mm -hmm. Real toothpaste. And then you have bacon chocolates. It is the latest thing right now in the US. Bacon mints. Uh, bacon lip balm. Bacon lip balm. And we <laughs> please don't eat bacon lip balm. <laughs> no, and we, we even and that's in the personal uh, care have bacon dental floss. So for bacon lovers, it's all here. This is the heart and soul of the store. Very much resides here. This is the candy you had as a child your parents had as a child, your grandparents had as a child. So it's all the nostalgic items. I don't know if you guys remember, I'm sure you remember the ticket. Uh, the Samson, I don't know if you guys had that. Yeah, they're here. Right here. Those things, the licorice Samson. So all those items are very much part of the culture here. So this is the gelato section. It is different than ice cream and the way that it's prepared. And we try to change the flavors regularly to expose customers to whatever is in. Right now, for example, the holiday is Christmas that's coming, so we're putting peppermint. A dream come true, chocolate shoes. <laughs> I absolutely adore this. So. So you can actually eat the entire shoe, don't yes, worry. The entire shoe. So that was our idea. Mm -hmm. uh, the phone booth, British, how yes. British do you want to be? So what's very interesting, it's a great hit with middle school kids. You have the cheddar cheese flavor or Mexican spice, in case you love hot things. <laughs> and also what's a very, very big hit, these are scorpions and roped in candy, lollipops. And so they take them and they dare each other. And that is because of Monster, the movie. Yeah. So uh, we always try to get whatever movies out. We try to also get their products. Okay. You can also buy rings that are made of candy, so you wear it and you can eat it. <laughs> Sports is a big thing, soccer season, baseball season. Right now, with Christmas at the door, gingerbread houses, mm -hmm. they're going to come here. People love the Star Wars section. Mm -hmm. So this is filled with candy, so what we try to do is combine the concept toy and candy at the same time to make it even more fun. It's about merchandising. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it organized chaos. Okay. <laughs> you think that everything is put just like that, but there is a science to it. It's like people like to always shop on what's on the right. Yes. So you will find us oh, I didn't know moving. That rotating our items because they're always going to shop on their right. Now we 
are in the theater section. Um, his favorite American movie is Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. It plays on the loop here. And I don't know about you, I still laugh at the same jokes after three of years course. in the store. They're fabulous. And all the candy you would get in the movie theater is right here. I would certainly recommend this kind of business um, to your audience. Um, look at the environment. It's a fun environment. Mm -hmm. It's low stress. Uh, brings a lot of joy. It's diverse. I can tell you it's anything but boring. Yes. I want to open up a store and, and where do I start? How do I know this is a good location? So for the Lafayette store, this is what I did. I knew that I didn't want to be too far from where I live so that in case of an emergency, I'm there. It's accessible. I don't have to plan ahead of time. The second thing that I did, I would show up in the morning, let's say 10 o'clock, and I would look at the foot traffic. Was it busy? I would come the day after at one o'clock and observe foot traffic. Then I would come at four in the afternoon, walk it in the evening, and I would start talking with the different stores. Do you like the area? Any concerns about the area? I would even go to the different stores. Do you like your landlord? Because you learn, the, you learn so much if you, you know how to ask the right questions. for having us here. Well, thank it's been, you it's been for really coming. Wonderful. Thank you. Wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. And I am sure lots of our Assyrian audience will be here visiting you. Anytime. Uh -huh. Everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome. Thank, thank you. you for coming. Thank you.